Hi, I'm Jacob Murad, president of KPA Lawyers. And again, in this video series, we're looking to answer the question, why do lawsuits take so long in Ontario? So in the first video, we talked about the pleading stage, statement of claim, statement of defense. At the end of that pleading stage, the pleadings have been closed and no one's suing anybody else, ideally, in this particular matter. And now we're going to talk about discovery. Okay, so I've sued you for breach of contract. You've sued me back and defended yourself. Okay, now let's get into the actual merits, the content behind everyone alleging something against each other. That's called discovery. So both sides or all parties are supposed to now exchange documents. It's called an affidavit of documents. So you're supposed to gather all the documents that are relevant for uh, this matter, and you have to give it to the other side. Relevance, that's a very low threshold. That means if you're suing somebody for personal injury, then what ends up happening is your medical records become up for grabs. But that doesn't seem fair. Um, there are certain exceptions of when you don't have to provide documents. That's uh, when they're privileged, for example, maybe you've heard the term, um, certain documents between yourself and a confidant do not have to be produced. And usually that's up to a judge to decide. So you go into this next phase where there's a, a plan of discovery between the different lawyers and they say, okay, um, by this date, we're going to send these much these documents and then you're going to respond and so forth. That's what happens in theory. In reality, people are late. People don't abide by the, the, the deadlines. And it just becomes this document exchange that takes a long time as well. Oh, you didn't send me all the documents I asked for. Yes, I did. Okay, let's let a judge decide. The exchange of documents. That's just part one of discovery. Part two of discovery is the examination in discovery. So when you exchange documents, each side has an opportunity to examine the person that gave the documents, to examine them on those documents. and ask questions. What are these documents about? How do they relate to what you were talking about in the statement of claim and in the pleadings? So you call them into a room, you arrange a date. Um, now it could be done virtually. And a lawyer is allowed to ask you questions and you uh, swear to tell the truth, much like you are in a trial. It's not trial yet. We're still just examining evidence at this period of time. And you have to answer the questions you and your lawyer will jump in to object to a, a certain question if they don't feel that it's relevant and you go back and forth. That's what happens in the discovery phase. Usually at this phase, this is a good time to start looking at settling because now ideally all of the, uh, of the evidence has come out. So hopefully you can try to settle in the discovery stage. Sometimes what happens during these examinations is uh, one side will say, well, you had mentioned a contract on this date, but you didn't produce it in your affidavit of documents. Where is that contract? Okay, I'll get it for you. That's called an undertaking. So now you have a 30 to 60 day period to produce that document. And then what happens after you don't produce that document? Well, then there are usually motions that go back and forth about making people produce the documents that they said they would. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about motions on the next video. So for now, we'll stick to discovery. So you have the exchange of documents. You'll have an argument about whether you've exchanged enough documents or whether you've properly gone through all the documents that have to be exchanged. Then you'll go to the questioning phase where you'll actually question the person as to the documents that have been produced. That's discovery. Only when you've completed discovery can you actually go to the next phase of the trial, which is pre-trial mediation, and then you actually get to trial. And I'm going to talk about that on the next video. So already you're starting to see a bit of a theme as to why trial takes so long, but we're going to go deeper into the next video. Thanks for watching. And if you're still interested, click on the next video.